Hi, in this lecture I'm going to be continuing our discussion of key concepts when we look at hunger. Um, first we're going to talk about global and domestic hunger and look at the similarities and differences between those two. I'll also be touching upon vulnerable populations, hunger and disease, and the effects of hunger on human and societal development. But first I'd like to take a minute and just recap a little bit of what Doug talked about. Um, first, key issues to consider when we define vulnerability and we look at hunger versus in the United States versus hunger in lesser developed countries, um, we're going to look at what are the vulnerable populations within those two contexts. Um, and then we're also going to look at who are the marginalized people. Um, we, we see indigenous populations, we see d people who are disenfranchised, the landless, the illiterate, and the uneducated. And I want to be able to, to bring back and let you guys understand who are those people and where do they exist. Um, but first, I want you to remember the three nested concepts because we're going to keep coming back to this throughout the lecture today. Um, we have food insecurity, hunger, and undernutrition. When we look at um, these three concepts together, it's important to note that although food insecurity means no current hunger but a vulnerability to it, we see a lot of food insecurity in the United States. Um, but when we get to the more severe cases of, of undernutrition, that's when you start to see the protein energy malnutrition and also the micronutrient deficiencies uh, that Professor Coots talked about in the last lecture. Um, when we talk about food security versus food insecurity, I want to remind you that food security is a condition that exists when all people at all times are free from hunger. Um, there's four elements to food security. This is availability of food, access to food, utilization of food, and um, vulnerability um, assessment. When we look at food insecurity, that's actually the absence of food security. And when we talk about that, I want to remind you of the food security framework that Professor Coots showed you um, and just remind you that a person's hunger status is affected by many, many different things. Um, for example, uh, physical and environmental risks. Um, someone's vulnerability, they may typically be a very food secure person, but um, this is um, 2011 in Alabama and a few months ago we had a massive uh, wave of tornadoes that ripped through very affluent areas so people that typically wouldn't be food insecure became food insecure because their environment was destroyed so people lost their homes they had no power for several weeks um, they had you know very little access to resources and so in this one condition they became food insecure whereas in the larger context of their life, they wouldn't typically be a food insecure person. Um, so there's a lot of factors that throughout a person's life that affect their food security. Um, and we're going to look at those um, in a larger context and then also in a local context. Um, when we talk about um, hunger, I want to also mention to you that of the three types of hunger, there's chronic, acute, and hidden hunger. Again, chronic hunger is when people suffer from hunger for long periods of time and hunger becomes their normal condition. Acute hunger when, is when people suffer from hunger for a short period of time, usually due to shocks such as drought or conflict. And then hidden hunger occurs when people are lacking essential micronutrients even if they're consuming the adequate number of calories and proteins.